Welcome to part two of a virtual tour of a few of Hawaii's many flower, foliage, and potted plant nurseries. Dr. Kreilly, how are you? Could you tell me who I am? Good morning, Kathleen. This is the research station for the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. We call it the Waimanalo Research Station, and it has a lot of different crops being grown here, mm -hmm. and includes our plumeria patch. And I'm standing in front of one that you said has a fragrance smell. Does every plumeria have a fragrance, or is just some? Well, you know, people have different noses. So some people will say this doesn't have a fragrance, and other uh -huh. people will say it does. Oh, it does? Okay. So I'm I've, gonna... I've got a plant over here that I don't think has a fragrance, but other people might. Oh, really? Okay, wait, let me turn. Now, I sniffed this before, and it's one of those flowers, and I'm just going to stay here all day long. It is so pretty. It just reminds me of what Hawaii really is. <laughs> when, you know, plumeria, the smell of the beautiful plumeria lay. Now, I understand that this, too, what how it's really difficult to re, to try to duplicate a plumeria scent is that right yes um, the thing of it is that there are 70 different compounds that make up, that a, make up a, a fragrance of a really? plumeria about half a dozen of them have been identified all plumerias are native to the Caribbean islands and Central America oh. and the northern coast of South America. This is actually a species plumeria. Look at its long, thin, narrow leaves uh -huh. with the, the edge of the leaf is kind of curled under. Uh -huh. And oh. this one is native to the Caribbean islands. And this one has a totally different scent to it to me from the yes. other tree that we just met. Wow. Most, so most of the species of plumerias are white with a little, little yellow throat like uh -huh. this. Is this here? That's the seed pod. Seed pods. The next tree behind us here, let's walk mm -hmm. back to okay. it. Okay. This, this is a common one in Hawaii landscapes. Oh, that's right. Uh -huh. this, this one is what we call the Singapore plumeria because it was brought into Hawaii from Singapore. Let's see, and the flowers are larger, they're white with very little yellow centers? Yes, I mean, this is the, the, the typical evergreen plumeria. Most of our colored forms lose mm -hmm. their leaves during the winter months. Okay. And the other nice thing about these yeah. is they're resistant to rust. On this varieties, on yeah. the white varieties? On the white variety. We do get some rust on these. Uh huh. But it's even worse on these. Yes, I noticed that one, yeah. See all I see. the rest pustules. Oh, good to know. This is one of the, the plumerias you might say is native to Hawaii because it was born and bred on Kauai. Oh, Back and what the, is the name of this one? Well, this one is called Jean Moraney Sr. Uh -huh. Jean Moraney was the wife of Bill Moraney, who was the uh, plantation manager for Grove Farm Sugar Plantation on Kauai. Mm. And back in the 1950s, Bill made the first controlled cross of plumerias, and he got about 200 seedlings, and out of those 200, he selected the ones that he liked best and named them for the women in his life, his wife, his daughters, his daughter-in-law, the grandkids. So this, this one, Jean, and then his daughter-in-law, Jeannie, is, is this tree, which is one of the favorites of our friends on the mainland. A really large flower it comes out early oh. in the spring. Uh huh. The gorgeous color. Kind of just yellow and red, totally, this one. Yeah, you can see some lower flowers. Oh, huh? so pretty. So hardy looking. Mm -hmm. And the trees tend to be fairly big in size. Ooh. But when they get old, then the branches uh -huh. kind of get tired and weep. Oh, this is cute. Now, what is this? Well, this is another plumeria. It's a species native to the Caribbean. Uh-huh. We think the uh, island of Hispaniola, Santo Domingo, and Haiti. But it's really tiny, thin petals, and it has the species name of stenopetala. Steno meaning narrow, and of course, petala meaning uh -huh. petal. But you can see there's no rust on this foliage. 
Yeah. So this would be another interesting one to try to get color into it. And again, it's a landscape thing. We haven't tried using these for arrangements. Kathleen, feel the petals on this one. Uh huh. And take a sniff. Tell me if you like the fragrance or not. Oh, this one I like. This is one of the hybrids that Mr. Moraney produced over in Kauai in the 1950s. This one didn't get named. It still has his number, Moraney number nine. Moraney number nine. There's a newspaper article from back in the 1950s or 60s mm -hmm. that says that he crossed a big variety named Daisy Wilcox with a red variety named Scott Pratt. Oh. Scott Pratt was actually the, the farm manager for the, the uh, Kohala sugar plantation. Wow. And he had this beautiful red uh -huh. that he shared around across the islands to everybody and, and everybody started calling it Scott Pratt. Mm. But Scott himself called it Kohala red. And, the, and Bill Marini, who in his breeding wouldn't name any people except for his wife and daughters and so forth, <laughs> he called everything by its location. So he called it Kohala. And then they planted it out on Ko Kaloa Road mm -hmm. on Kauai and it became known as Kaloa Red. So we have a whole row of uh, the hybrids that Mr. Moraney produced. Wow. But this one may or may not be a good one for Lay. Uh, oh. It will last, but it does get speckled on the, on the, the flower petals. Uh -huh. And it's probably not going to be a great one for shipping this plumeria, which is named for a fellow who is a prominent, we might call him plumerian, mm -hmm. in Southern California, who introduced a lot of different uh, plumerias. But this selection was made by Jim Little on Oahu and named for Henry Apples Dupree. And it's a nice, large yellow, fairly mm -hmm. good texture. Mm -hmm. And uh, makes a nice lay. And it's a fairly good bloomer as well for us. Oh, okay. Wow. Now, if you wanted to use the, you know, the cluster as an arrange, for an arrangement. Well, this how one do has you... a nice long stem to it. Okay. Can you keep, what can you do to, so that the water intake, right? Because you see plumerias don't really have a great water intake on the stem, right? Well, the, the thing is that the white milky latex clogs up the water conducting vessels. Mm -hmm. So okay. you have to trim the, the base of the stem again underwater, and sometimes using hot water, sometimes using alcohol, you can keep that latex from flowing and clogging up the water conducting vessels. If you can manage that, then you can keep water going to the flowers. Oh, and they'll okay. continue to open from you know, the spiral bud like this. Well, alcohol or hot water, you have to play with it then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like uh, in, in design work with poinsettias. Right. They have right. all that milky texture. And again, they've figured out how to uh, coagulate the protein in, in the latex. I see. Oh, okay. So if you want to do design work, that's good to know with you yeah, know, the I mean, plumeria clusters. If you could use this for a single day if, if you just need a cluster and you're mm -hmm. not concerned about keeping it for the later flowers to open up. I see. People are going to want to know where to get plumerias from and uh, what where can we get them? Well, a lot of times people are just willing to give you a cutting off a plant in their yard mm -hmm. if you ask nicely. Mm -hmm. um, there are collections, for example, the city has a really nice collection of plumerias at the uh, Coco Crater Botanical Garden. It was created by Dean Conklin. Mm -hmm. By the way, this plumeria is named for Dean Conklin. And ah. unfortunately, people help themselves there. The best I can suggest is to contact a local nursery mm -hmm. and say, I want a plumeria. And if you know a name, and you can find name varieties on, on, the, on the web. Okay. And okay. there's a lot of people who are selling plumeria cuttings from Hawaii to the mainland. Right, I've seen that. You, so you can go online. Okay. And, uh, and I mentioned Jim Little, the nurseryman on the North Shore. He only sells through online. 
Oh, okay. And there, then there's growers on Maui and the Big Island as well. And sometimes you have the layflower growers who need to trim their trees. Mm -hmm. They might be able to spare a few cuttings. Oh, okay. Good. So there's like one grower on the island of Molokai has over seven acres of trees. So that's a lot. Yeah. But they're all the variety Celadine, which is the best one for, for layflower. Okay. Celadine. Celadine is, is a nice yellow with a long keeping life. Okay. Oh, that's good. That's nice to know. Okay. I think well, thank you for the opportunity to show off our plumeria collection and for me to ramble on a little bit about oh, uh, the history and background and so forth. You didn't ramble. I learned so much today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Criley. And we'd like to say aloha. Aloha, folks. Bye. Today we're here at Lion Arboretum in Manoa Valley and with us is Tim Krister. Tim Kressig. He's a horticultural manager here. Tell me about the history of the Lion Arboretum. Yes, so uh, aloha and welcome to the University of Hawaii's Lion Arboretum. We are a research unit of the university. so. We function to help facilitate research and education, as well as a resource for the community here on Oahu and in Hawaii. Um, we have close to 200 acres of property here wow. that has a history of, of for reforestation dating back to the 1930s. Um, because of unsustainable land practices, cattle grazing, if you can believe it, uh, the entire forest of Manoa Valley um, was grazed down to practically nothing. So there were big wow. issues with erosion um, and water not being captured and filtered down into our aquifer. The Hawaii Sugar Planters Association, mm -hmm. uh, who once owned this property, was very concerned with that because it meant that they probably weren't capturing water that they were going to utilize for irrigation for their sugarcane crops and their sugarcane breeding programs. So they wanted to reforest the valley, so they hired botanists um, and Harold Lyon himself, who was a plant pathologist, to travel around the world, collect tree species, and conduct reforestation research here in the valley. So initially, it was just basically a collection of trees and uh, over time, we've built it into a world-class botanical garden with over 9,000 accessioned nice. plantings. Wow. One of the largest palm collections in the world with over 700 species and an assortment of really beautiful tropical ornamentals um, and flowers from, from all over the world. Can mm -hmm. you tell us about what you got for us here? Sure, so uh, some of the collections that I would like to highlight here um, are a lot of our, our cut flowers and our tropical foliage um, that we have across our collections here. And just to mention, we do have seven miles worth of hiking trails. We have a waterfall on property and many of these beautiful tropical flowers and trees can be found uh, along the trail and throughout our collection. Um, but we'll start with gingers first. We have a couple uh, beautiful alpenias here that were actually developed uh, here at Lion Arboretum uh, by one of my predecessors, Bob Hirano, which was, he was uh, here at Lion Arboretum for close to five decades, working in the greenhouse to um, select and develop and, and name uh, beautiful cut flowers such as gingers and heliconias, rhododendrons. So these are a couple of his beautiful alpenia hybrids here that he selected, which I believe are jungle queen and jungle king here. So very nice large alpenias. He also did uh, quite a bit of work with hedigiums. So here we have uh, a species, which is the white one, I believe Coronarium, 
And then the orangish yellow one is one of his seedlings that he grew out from some of his crosses. Um, we also have a number of really nice uh, species as well as hybrid heliconias in our collection. We do serve as a repository for heliconias for the National uh, Heliconia Society. This one in particular is a Bob Hirano selection uh, that is exclusive to Lion Arboretum called Manoa Midnight. A very nice uh, seedling selection of Richmond's Red that has this beautiful dark maroon color that's quite unique. Um, we also have uh, in the ginger group quite a few of the various types of torch ginger. So here we have um, a very nice um, uh, Etlingera elatier here is the scientific name of this torch ginger. We also have some beautiful rows of Siam here in our collection. You can see that right along the trail. And finally is the um, Etlingera venusta, which is the Malay rose. So three different types of torch ginger that you can see in our collections here at Lion Arboretum. Cool. We also have quite a diverse collection of aeroids, all the way from beautiful monsteras like this to other types of anthuriums, both species and hybrids. We do work closely with researchers in the University of Hawaii, College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, as well as other nurserymen and plant breeders throughout the state. And then one more group I'd like to highlight is our teas, our cordylines. We have a beautiful, diverse collection of cordylines here. Um, many of them were developed and named and selected here in Hawaii. This one is one that is uh, quite striking. It's called Hawaiian Flag. This beautiful, colorful, pink highlighted tea is called Kauai Beauty. And then finally, this nice erect tall tea with uh, purple and green variegation is called Pele Smoke. So three really beautiful teas yeah. in our collection. Wow. Um, and then finally, because we oh, do like to work with our, our native Hawaiian plants as well, we have a lot of really beautiful endemic native Hawaiian plants. And so some of our hibiscus that are naturally found here in Hawaii also make for very beautiful potted specimens. Um, and some hybrids like this one here, Leana, were developed years ago and have beautiful blossoms, very nice habit. And so these grow well here in Hawaii as well as other tropical climates. Another group that we're working with to select the nicest and most interesting cultivars. They're beautiful. That coloring is just gorgeous along with the rhododendron. Oh my god. So definitely check our website UH Lion Arboretum. Tune into social okay. media to get updates on the work that we do here at Lion Arboretum mm -hmm. to grow our collections, to propagate our collections and to share it with the community oh, I here. Look forward to it. And I, I understand too that you have some classes sometimes throughout the year or offer yes, specials. Yes, we do offer adult classes um, on various horticultural, landscaping, um, flower arrangement, you know, a wide variety, even cooking classes. Um, it's kind of, you know, put on pause for the last, last year or so, but we are looking to resume our adult classes safely in the future. So welcome to the Lion Arboretum Greenhouse here, where we propagate, grow, and maintain uh, our collection of greenhouse plants to supplement the plantings in our, on our grounds, as well as to propagate plants for our biannual plant sales. And one of the groups of plants that, that we are working on in particular are the carnivorous plants. Um, most people are familiar with the Venus flytrap. Um, but what they don't know is that it's actually only found in a very small section of uh, North and South Carolina, nowhere else in the world. 
Um, but what people also don't know is that's only one species of carnivorous plant, and believe it or not, there are over 700 species of plants found across the world on every continent except for Antarctica that are truly carnivorous. So they've evolved this ability to attract, to capture, and to derive benefit from animal prey. So one group of carnivorous plants that has been utilized in the cut flower and foliage industry are the North American pitcher plants or the Saracenia is the genus. And here you can see they have these beautiful flute-like um, pitchers that they attract insect prey visually as well as with nectar. The insects end up uh, slipping down into this flute-like tube where there are digestive enzymes, microorganisms, and they meet their fate. The plant then absorbs the nutrients through glands in the base of the pitcher, and it derives benefit from those nutrients. But you can see uh, they are very beautiful. They work very nice in a cut flower foliage arrangement, um, and they vary in color from very nice uh, green like this one here to flared out red uh, coloration with some nice venation in the lid. And there are um, a diversity of different varieties that have been developed. Inspiration Point, which is one of our points of interest here up at Lion Arboretum. And it's a beautiful grassy area here that offers wonderful scenic views, not only yeah, of our beautiful plant that. collections, but also of lush, beautiful Manoa Valley. Um, so if you are here in Hawaii, uh, you're interested in a, a beautiful scenery landscape to come and do a photo shoot, potentially for a wedding, um, this is definitely one of the go-to spots that offers some really beautiful scenery for some awesome wedding photos or just uh, to come and enjoy the beautiful scenery, have a picnic. Just check out our website or give us a call at our main office to schedule a photo shoot or to get a reservation to come and hike on our trails. Are you feeling inspired, Kathleen? <gasps> oh my God, this is so gorgeous. I'm in the back trap. I feel romantic. I feel loved. I, I want to get married again. <laughs> <laughs> We have an amazing, huge collection, yes. a lot to explore, a lot of beautiful places to see. So please do Definitely. come and visit and come explore our collections and the beauty of Manoa Valley. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye. Aloha. And we're with Anuhea Flowers. We own a 12-acre protea farm up country, Maui. We took over the business three years ago uh, from Bill and Judy Mertens. Um, and they've been growing protea here up country since the 90s. And uh, we are Hifna members. So we offer a variety of items year round. Uh, our gift boxes are featured on our website. We offer eight, 12, and 20 stems. And then there's usually a seasonal uh, offering as well. You can order, get them in New York in a day and a half. On island, you get them the next day. West Coast, you get them the next day. It's pretty amazing. Next, we do arrangements. This is a custom arrangement. You can order customized arrangements or we have some of our standard offerings. Our signature trade wind basket is made with um, hand-woven palm frond baskets. Absolutely beautiful. It's very Hawaii. Our Maui gem is a standard offering. We also always make sure to do fun uh, seasonal offerings for holidays and we run specials um, on those. And then finally, our reeds are probably one of the favorite items that we do here on Ahea Flowers. Judy Mertens uh, originally taught us the, the technique and then we have run with it and made our own designs over the years. This is the Maui mink wreath. 
go to anuheyaflowers.com and you can order online you can see what's available if you don't see something that you would like you can always call us and see if we're able to customize it or discuss what is available seasonally that time of year and you can also read more about us and our farm and what we do some of the different uh, projects and exciting things that we have in the works you can sign up to be part of our contacts list ultimately we would like to hopefully be doing farm tours you can email us at info, that's I-N-F-O, at anuheaflowers.com. And please follow us on Instagram or Facebook, Anuhea Flowers. We're always posting really fun things. And coming soon, Anuhea Flowers merchandise, along with just other exciting things. Thank you so much for your time, and we hope you enjoy your virtual tour. I like buying from you because I can often find something very unique and different that it's hard, that's harder to come by. Yeah, well, it was uh, probably 20 years of accumulation, you know, going on the internet and seeing what's out there and bringing in varieties to uh, keep ahead of the curve in the tropical industry because that's what makes it interesting right. is having new product, you know, so I've gotten stuff from Florida. Costa Rica, Colombia, and it's just, that's what kept my interest going too, was bringing in the new varieties. What you're looking at right now is the Jungle King, which is one of the biggest, hardiest varieties of ginger. One of the drawbacks to them is that they're so big, that they're so heavy, it's really hard to ship because of the freight weight. So it's mostly desirable for local work, but it can be shipped and it has a great shelf life. And these are the Kimis. And the Kimis came out with, I think they introduced 19 varieties to the industry. As you can see, they have different shades, different texture shapes. When you're ordering, we have to know what you're using it in. So for you to just say, I'd like 10 pink torch. I don't know if you're putting it in a bridal bouquet or if you're doing an arch work. So you have to specify whether you'd like it arch size, you know, giant or bridal bouquet, yeah. you know, that type of, so that gives me a better idea of how to provide for you. Part of my uh, search on the internet was to look for different color varieties to be able to provide during the slow periods of some of the other, and it's been a, a really unique thing to explore and, and search and gain the information and knowledge of all the varieties that are out there. I mean, the crossbreeds, this one is a orthotrica, stricta cross called a orange, orange marmalade. And uh, this, this one's different. I've never seen that. This is called orange delight. I got, a, yeah, I got that from nice Puerto one. Rico. Yeah. That's a really nice one. And then this iris is one of the new staples as well. This is a stricta like the other orange and yellow I was showing you. Another stricta is a canary yellow. Super nice solid yellow variety. Good for shipping. Nice for small arrangement type design work. Yeah, there's so much types of cut foliage. Like the Tresinas, the Song of Jamaica, and we're, we're actually calling a solid green one because we don't know what the name is, so we're calling it the Song of Kuyaha. You know, give it our, our own little flair. And then the Song of India. There's just a, such a slew of different varieties of beautiful types of cut foliage. And one of the big staples is your, one of your favorites, the Eureka. You know, the smaller the variety, the more uh, options you have to use. And one that we just started uh, implementing into our product line is uh, Podocarpus, you know, which is another long lasting shelf life cut foliage. And when we need to order, even when I'm ordering from you, I would refer to the guy and say on page so and so, something similar, you know, to image da 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 da, because you may not have a specific variety blooming at that time. Correct but you can actually explain the color palette that you're looking for by referencing the guide, which is available for free 
at hawaiineatropica.com and you can get a hold of Judy to send you one, just pay the shipping. But yeah, anybody doing work with tropicals, I encourage you to get a copy in your hand. And if you can, come out to Hawaii, see the product for yourself and experience the beauty of the islands and the people of the islands, because that is truly what we're blessed with when we're working with people like David and we've been doing this for over 12 years. And I know he's got my back and that's so much easier to get the job done. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, you're welcome. Welcome to the Kauai Agricultural Research and Extension Station. This is part of the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources at the University of Hawaii Manoa. I'm James Keach. I'm the ornamental extension agent for this island and we'll be showing you some of the material that's been collected by myself but also by various faculty and agents over the years. We're working on trying to propagate this material so that we can get it out to growers across the state and then on to designers and florists. So here we have Rose of Siam. This is a ginger relative, and you can see that it has a generally rose-like flower that remains partially open. The stem is nice and long, which makes it useful for a wide range of arrangements, and you can see it's quite prolific in flower production. Here we have Kiss of Death. This is a type of costus that you can see has really dark wine-red bracts. It's really nice if you're looking for something to really kind of bring darkness, but also a shiny sort of elegance to a bouquet. True flowers do emerge, but the real talking piece with these is the bracts. Under good cultivation, the brack arrangement can grow and increase to almost a foot long. This is another costus in our collection. As you can see, this one, the main attraction is actually the stems which have this wonderful patterning. This is almost bamboo-like, but much lighter weight, so cheaper to transport. The patterning also remains even after some drying. You can see that because the patterning is both constant and has some randomness to it, it adds a nice structural element to arrangements. Here we have various, various stages of the pincushion type of protea. These are survivors from an earlier trial that was conducted on trying to grow proteas at lower elevations. You can see some beautiful coloration on this and how that would stand out in a nice arrangement. We're hopeful to be propagating this wonderful survivor and to also get some more from Maui that we can trial here to increase protea production in the state. This is a Gravelia. And you can see it has really nice foliage and then later will be complemented by flowers. We have both a white flowered form of this as well as a red flowered. These plants are from the import replacement plant project done in collaboration with the extension program on Maui. These are plants that might be difficult for growers to source from outside the state or ones that are used a lot in arrangements. Among the many gingers we have here, who have a range of different types of beehive gingers, you can see these have really beautiful bracts with great round forms that can be taken advantage of. White true flowers will emerge from them, but the bracts are much longer lasting. My name is Johnny Gordinas. I am the Kauai Director for Hawaii Floriculture and Nursery Association. And we invite you to Kauai Nursery and Landscaping Company located in Puhi on the Garden Island of Kauai. This is a beautiful specimen of a miniature lauhala. And it's very versatile and it can be used in many ways. Our designers use it all the time. You can strip it and make bows, you can make twists, you can make it into like a little, um, like this, and fold it over and across, like this. You can tie it up and twist it up like this. It has a lot of potential, and it's very long-lasting. Miniature variegated 
Valhalla. Here we have an employee at Kauai Nursery Landscaping putting in just a kind of impromptu arrangement using some cuts from their collection. You can see some beautiful pink torch gingers going in, different kind of red and orange heliconias. And this is a great sort of view of different plants that are kind of growing around our island and that the Kauai Nursery Landscaping likes to showcase for their customers in the sales area. We're looking at assorted varieties of dwarf tea leaves, which make excellent fillers in flower arrangements and also can be added to bouquets. This one? This is a Kahili type of miniature tea leaf. Another one that's a little different. Some miniature black teas. This is really nice if you have a bride or customer who wants kind of that dark palette and you want some foliage to complement it. This is a newer variety to me. Um, one of our designers, Dottie Yadao, was familiar with it. And it's called a Japanese spindle. And she said it's very good for lines in flower arrangements, for some vertical movement. Japanese spindle. These purple bromeliads that we see here are called passion. A really nice kind of coloration that you could see used in the arrangement, as well as foliage. This is in the certified nursery section. So all of these are ones that are approved for transport back to the mainland. They've been grown under special conditions uh, and are guaranteed not to have nematodes that could ruin mainland agriculture. This is called Focus. This is a reddish orange bromelia. You can see just really stunning color around there. We see some nice yellow bromeliads over here. The yellow one is called Hilda. This is one sort of like the Xanadu foliage that we see. This might just be smaller from being grown in a pot. It has great foliage. It's a philodendron lickety split. Philodendron lickety split. So you can see a really nice kind of leaf variation compared to the more normal philodendrons. It's a beautiful tea showing how that leaf kind of lays and how that might actually be really nice in the arrangement. In the bridal bouquet. And then it back like that. This is feather bamboo. Beautiful branching habit. Really nice for kind of providing some architecture for your arrangement. My name is Josh McClung. I'm the uh, owner here at uh, Hawaii Global Nursery Exporters LLC, which uh, we grow mainly Dracaena. Uh, and a few other varieties here in Curtis Town, Hawaii, which is uh, one of the rainiest places on earth. Uh, just the other day, we got four inches of rain in one day, which makes it a great growing environment for these plants, especially Dracaena and uh, the Song of India, the Compacta, the Dracaena marginata, um, all grow extremely well in this particular location. Do you need much uh, nutri uh, added nutrition to your field stock? Not really surprising. We do feed it, you know, with a real just balanced fertilizer. Yeah. Um, but the soil is so good out here, actually, once it gets established. So we take this and you measure them out. So your client wants a, a one, two, three, four footer in there, let's say, and that'd be a, a cutback set. Yeah. And you put those all in a pot and then you ship that over to California in about three months. And they're grown in simple cinder, which uh, we have that is ored right here down in Pune, mm -hmm. um, and then just brought up in a truck and mixed and cooked with uh, a little bit of peat moss. Um, when I say cooked, it's because we have to heat it up to get rid of all the nematode. Because we're a certified nursery, which means that California has a direct relationship with us a certain number of growers out here where we have a specific permit where we're allowed to ship and inspect our own loads before they go out, which is a huge opportunity for us because that's where 100% of our export business goes to. I understand. We, we do grow for uh, a lot of nurseries here on the island, 
as well as big hotels and uh, other areas and shopping centers and whatnot. Um, our shade house can hold 6,000 plants on the benches. Uh, certified benches once again so that what that means is that once a year the Ag Department comes here and does samples of all the media and looks for nematode and different any other type of bug and then we get certified to make sure we don't have any of those issues. Um, the benches are all wired for, for drip system uh, that runs off of county water which is really lucky to have out here. Uh, so we grow tricolor marginatus, we grow green marginata, we grow compacta, and these are all at various stages of development. We just shipped out uh, about 500 plants last week. Um, so when you see gaps, the so gaps are welcome, but then they need to get filled back up immediately, obviously. Uh, we have fields in Popeye and Hakalau where things like the Warnakai come from. Um, and the compacta come from over in Popeye Cove. Uh, we have different mother fields, 20 different acres of plants that are growing. So we have to take care of those as well. Uh, the Norfolk pines came from Mountain Meadows. Yep, yep. So these were one gallon when we first got them. And then we're growing them into big old 15 gallon trees here. And they love it. We have if we could grow a million of these, we couldn't keep up with it. Wow. This is a really popular one again right now. Anything, anything architectural always seems to, you know, get, get to be a, uh, a real popular plant. And this one grows in such cool architectural ways, like the ficus lorata and whatnot. We um, uh, are all concerned with the, the pandemic and what the impact to our, our industry has been. How, is, how, have you, how have you fared during this period of time? I, uh, I remember sitting on the board with you having meetings at the beginning of the pandemic and all of us thinking, oh boy, here we go. What's, what, how is our industry going to be affected by this? And it could have, we thought, gone either way. But because of the fact that everybody had to move indoors, the interior plant market has seen an entirely new revolution. That, that hasn't happened since the 1970s. And uh, the buyers that I have come out here from mainly Los Angeles, Southern California area, have been in the business for quite a while, uh, 30 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, he told me, one, one specific buyer told me that this revolution is bigger than they've ever seen. The demand is greater than it's ever been. And he thinks it's very sustainable as well because of the fact that uh, it, it started as people going inside, and then uh, because of social media and whatnot, uh, the popularity of the interior plant has skyrocketed to areas and where no one thought it would. One of our goals as a, uh, an organization and, and people in the industry is to try to bring kids into it and bring the, the local uh, education and schools to, to continue to teach classes in agriculture because right now they're getting pushed aside and canceled a lot. Um, so maybe uh, we can inspire just a couple kids out there just by doing what we're doing here. I agree with you wholeheartedly and that's a challenge for all of us in our industry. As I say, I'm second generation in this industry and uh, I know what the challenges are in order to provide the opportunities for our kids and grandkids for the future. So I thank you for all your help that you've, uh, uh, that you've done for Hefna, your involvement, your commitment to the industry. So it's been an inspiration to all, the, all of us. So Yeah, and the, the feeling's mutual. You, the whole board has been so welcoming to a new farmer like myself uh, that I don't think I could be anywhere where I am without the help and support that you guys have given me. So thank you as well, sir. Terrific. Well, we live on an island and we got to help each other and <laughs> row in the same direction. All right. Practice aloha. When the eruption occurred in 2018, uh, the heart of the orchid growing business was in Kapoho. And within just a couple of weeks, 
the whole, all of Kapoho and every single nursery down there was devastated. And of course, our, our board of directors got together. We saw the stress that occurred. Everybody was impacted because if you didn't actually grow product there, you sold their product or distributed their product. And so we were all committed to trying to bring back the orchid business. Farmers, people in agriculture are fiercely independent because they've had to depend upon their own resources. So finding the right group of, of, of people, being able to put together a cooperative effort has been a major challenge. We got the growers together and we laid it all out and the, uh, the group formed the co-op in April of 2019. The current members have been committed to bringing in new members, but the major criteria is what will you bring to the table? Because what we want is not someone who is gonna be a burden to the co-op, but who can actually make a positive contribution to the efforts of the co-op, because everyone sees the potential in working together. So we have uh, five different growers uh, working closely together for the mutual good of the co-op. And of course, we hope to, uh, we hope to use this to teach young growers in terms of how to grow these orchids and everything else, provide them the infrastructure and the marketing effort to market their product and be able to expand this uh, well beyond what we have here. We've applied for emergency loan from the state and for grant money from the County of Hawaii, as well as some other grant funds from various different government agencies. Uh, we've been very successful in being able to raise funds in this manner. And so we sort of break, broke ground at about the beginning of 2020 and started constructing this nursery. In this section here is our, our newly transplanted um, dendrobium orchids. Um, these were in the flask within the last couple of weeks. This one was uh, transplanted 924. September 24th. These are the mature uh, four-inch potted plants that we purchased. And we're currently selling them to another exporter. Since our volume is so limited right now, we can't, we don't have the volume to do our own shipping. They look so healthy. Oh yeah, they, they look really great. It was grown, we purchased this from one of our members, who's a good grower. So the dendrobium, uh, under this plastic, they don't need shade. We get the regular sunlight here. Yeah? Well, we use 50% oh. plastic o optimum for a dendrobium. You'll notice these are oncidium plants that have been recently transplanted from plug trays into four inch pots. That's nice. And uh, as you know, oncidium require a little bit more shade than dendrobium. So you'll notice that we've got additional shade uh, in this area here. So, what kind of media do you, you are you using, Gordon? We use uh, orchid bark. This is a finer orchid bark that, uh, along with perlite, the white item is perlite. But that's what we're using exclusively here, not any cinder. No cinder, yeah. yeah. And so I know it looks moist, so how often do you have to water these Well, plants? at this time of the year, uh, we are irrigating twice a week. Twice a week? Yeah. In the summertime, they go three times a week. Oh, so. I noticed the color, there's different colors. Is that different varieties? Different cultivars. There's so many different colors here. I know. So tell, I me know. A, tell me a little bit about them. How, how many varieties do you grow here? Uh, I think we have about 30 different wow. cultivars. Wow. And today we have the pleasure of visiting Pua Ono Farm. And we have Leila Chun here to tell us something about uh, Pua Ono Farm. Um, how long has the farm been here, Leila? It has been here just a little over two years. I started the farm. Um, it was just bare land and we just put in some high tunnels. Um, to grow temperate flowers. Well, I'll tell you, driving in here, it's very, very impressive. And uh, I, I can't help but 
think of this as sort of an oasis on, in the middle of a huge forest. Uh, where, tell me something about yourself and your, fa your family. Uh -huh. So my husband and I are originally from Honolulu. Uh, we went to the University of Hawaii and when we graduated, we left Hawaii for 30 years. Did you study agricultural or what did you study? Uh, yeah, so my background was actually medical technology. I actually worked in a hospital, um, a laboratory, and did a lot of testing. My husband's a physician, and that was why we came back to Hawaii. Uh, Queens North Hawaii was looking for more physicians and he was ready to slow down a bit and so we found land uh, because I wanted to farm. Right. That's awesome, awesome. <laughs> We're glad you did. I remember when you first came to our shop and she had mini calla lilies. Uh, yes. They were beautiful. Um, but I know you've learned a lot since then. I learned a huge amount. In fact, a month after we arrived back in Hawaii, uh, the University of Hawaii, the foundation started the Go Farm Hawaii program, which I participated in. I was a part of the first cohort. Oh, cool. And it was amazing. It was the best education of farming in Hawaii and I would recommend it to anyone. How long who, was the program? Uh, just about six months. Okay. Lots of hands-on, lots of book work. They brought in specialists, soil scientists, Ooh. pest management experts. It, it's, I highly recommend it for anyone who wants to farm. The characteristics of a farmer here is you take risk. You don't know what's going to grow, so you just kind of experiment on your own. Um, and my husband, when I said I wanted to farm, he said, okay, let's look for land. Yeah. So he's been very supportive of Good. my little venture here. What is your favorite thing you're growing right now? Yeah. Um, or favorites. Uh, yeah, so, so. <laughs> you, you know, dahlias, I loved it in yeah. Washington. I grew it for 14 years there. Wow. And growing it here, I just love it because there's such a huge variety. Everything from tiny little pom-poms to big um, dinner plates. Um, the colors, full spectrum mm -hmm. of colors. Mm -hmm. And also the productivity. Yeah. Tons of... Um, stems from just one little tuber. How oh, cool. Wow, look at these. Layla, what are these? So these are heirloom spider chrysanthemums. They've, um, I planted them in the spring of this year. Um, and they do best in short days. So they're just putting out their blooms right now. Layla, what are these lovely things? So, so these are echinaceas. Um, I planted them last year uh, and they seem to grow, you know, from summer and they're still growing even uh, into the fall. Uh, this variety is the Cheyenne Spirit. They're much um, I don't think they're slower growing, but they're much shorter. And this taller one is called Paradiso. Layla, what are these beautiful things? Oh, uh, so these are snapdragons. Yeah. They give height to arrangements for my florists and flora designers. Oh, they're I a see. great color, too. Yeah. I see you've got the white. The lavender. And this is a different variety, huh, Layla? Yes, that one's a Chantilly variety. Well, you know, part of our mission here is making people aware that these flowers are available. And so I'm sure that you'll be hearing from some of the local florists. Again, being able to source fresh uh, flowers like the, these temperates mm -hmm. locally is so important. at Grace Flowers, Hawaii. which is Allison Giggins' <laughs> place yes. here at Honoka. Yeah. Allison, tell us about Grace Flowers. Oh my gosh, so I opened Grace Flowers Hawaii in 2012, so November makes nine years in business. 
Um, I started in a tiny, tiny little shop on Mamane Street here in Honoka'a, um, and it was just me. I now have 16 employees. We do about 35 to 40 weddings and events a month. Um, we do almost all of our own lay in house, so you'll see that. We have a flower bar, and then during COVID, we actually expanded to do nursery, um, do live plants. So my parents actually had a plant nursery in Waimea when I was growing up. So I kind of was raised in the industry. Um, and so I always wanted to have live plants, but we just never had the time to sort of get that going. So COVID really forced us to shift things. And um, so we went from 90% of our business being in, uh, out of state to 100% in state within like a one month period. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so um, having the plants is something that local people really want. Um, and we, we have the flower bar, we do arrangements and everyday lay and um, you know holidays too, but the plants really are, are popular. So this is our retail space. We have a flower bar. Um, we use these flowers for everyday arrangements also. So I try to um, have a broad, a broad assortment of product. A lot of it's from Hilo. Um, but you know, some of it's grown locally here in Honoka'a. You know, we, we work with over a dozen farmers on the Big Island. So I really want to show you my walk-in. Wow, Yeah. look at that. So this is, um, it's run on a cool box and it was a lettuce farm or a produce farm down the road was getting rid of it and we bought it and it, it's made such a difference. Oh, so sure. most of our temperate, you can see we have some of the flowers from Daisy Duke that she harvested, some of that celosia. And wow, look at that stuff. This is Dara and Queen Anne's lace. And I don't, oh, you know what? Actually, I do. I even have some of this is Dusty Miller. And it's a really great foliage. It's got this silver color. It's, it's kind of similar to Artemisia. Some people get it confused. From this Puono? one's from Pua Ono, yeah. Yeah, I saw that there. But it's really nice. I love using this. And then right now we have a lot of Protea. Um, and these are actually from South Point. So That's I know right. Maui's more known for its protea, but That's right. we have some beautiful protea growers here on our island also. And even this is a local lily. Look at that. Wow, look at that. Yeah. That's amazing. So this is a, um, oriental. It's got a nice fragrance. So we keep the cooler at around 50 to 45 degrees. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it drops down a little bit, but it, it's, it really is great for keeping things cool. This is our design room. Yeah. And this must be the heart of the business here. This is where the magic happens. Yeah. So, wow. you know, we're, we got some little guys getting ready. Nicole's here designing away. We have tuberose, which is a lay flower. Um, a lot of times it'll come in wet, so we dry it out. Um, and then when we package it, it doesn't rot. And wow, look at that. So you can see the tropicals mixed with the temperate. So we've got the dahlias. We actually have some rosemary and some soft olive, which is a foliage that's grown mm -hmm. in Waimea, but that's also considered a temperate foliage. And this is called false cinnamon. It's just kind of something that grows locally. And then we have it with the green ming protea, palanzia, orchids. So you can see they mix really well together. They just, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Honoka'a has got a great community, and I'm really stoked to be a part of it. Allison is uh, modest about it, but she's one of the leading designers and one of the most sought after designers here in the Big I, Island. I have a great uh, team. The Hawaii Floriculture and Nursery Association thanks you for watching this virtual tour of a few of the many farms and nurseries in Hawaii. Purchasing flowers, foliage, and potted plants from Hawaii is easy. The Neotropica guidebook contains over 800 photographs. For your free copy, send a mailing address to order Hawaii Neotropica guide at gmail.com. Aloha from Hawaii.